Harp Week. <laughs> <laughs> On this installment in Creative Cabin Fever, we have the Love Buzz. And today is yeah. Harp Day and it's Harp Week. And they've just released Harp. Hello, boys. How are we? That's the crack. We're very good. We're fine. We're very fine. good. Feeling little fiddles on Harp Day. Yeah. Uh, plenty of rest. But there's no rest for the wicked. Do you know? At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Yeah. Big long day of like uh, getting to listen to our song over and over again on Spotify, yeah. which is always nice. And just seeing people listen to it, which has been fantastic. Just seeing people from throughout the years and new people coming in and seeing the song played in new places of the world. It's fantastic. So thanks to everyone who helped make this possible. That's amazing. I've listened to it at least seven times and I've obviously shared it around with anyone I thought that would enjoy it. And I'm dead proud and delighted. But you've already gotten quite good feedback. So like, obviously you've got your Golden Plaque review and Post Punk Podge shared that on his Instagram. So you know you're making it when Post Punk Podge shares it on his Instagram. Oh, shout out to that man. Underground hero, man. Yeah. Speak, speaking speaking for the people. If you know, you know. Mm. You know, he really he's he's been he's been a beacon of hope for everyone during this time, I think. Uh, time. among time. among other artists, but Podge has been really just fighting for us in this in this battle. Mm. Yeah. We're lucky. We're lucky. Well, we are, it's great. And it's great to see that there's so many inspirational artists, yourselves included, still releasing incredible music and still taking the chances in the middle of this interesting time. Yeah, it has to be done. It has Definitely. to be done. Sure, if you can't play music, you might as well focus on recording music, you know. So we just want to record like our best music now, like, you know. Get a tea. Yeah, it's yeah. good time for that. Yeah, very good time for it's thinking over time. things, mulling over tracks and stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's a great time for getting new listeners as well, because people are listening to music a lot more intensely than they were before. Like I'm calling this phase of my life rediscovering music for the first time. So whether yeah. I'm discovering new acts or whether I'm going back to old songs I never really paid that much attention to, yeah. I'm emerging myself in music differently. How do you guys find that process at the moment? Oh, it's been it's been an interesting one with the lockdown. It's given us a chance to really immerse ourselves in different different things. Like 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 you said, going back an old artist and hearing them in a new way. And like, how have you found it? That's I've been li- I've been listening to like I've been updating my playlist every like week or month, but like. Mm. I don't know. I don't. I don't mull over old tunes as much. I usually just try to new stuff, you know. But I, I'm currently working on a playlist of songs that have been Bluetooth to me, or I Bluetooth to someone as a child. So it's gonna be really good, like you know. Yeah. Kiss me through the phone and things. Yeah, that's amazing. Like I have this whole concept that each and every single one of us has a soundtrack to their life. Yeah, so I've mm-hmm. been compiling my soundtrack for quite some time now and I keep adding to it and taking songs away like yeah that's a good one actually that's, that's, that, that is that very important part of a, a song in in your life is to the timeline of it all yeah all. yeah document it and stamp it in, in a certain place like because the songs you can listen to and it can take to a certain smell certain day period with motion like and anyway it's just been it's been, an, it's been an amazing experience to just be able to listen to so much music over the lockdown. Yeah, because we, sure, we haven't right. been working for a lot of of lockdown, so yeah. it's mostly just listening to music or making music. Like, that was, so it was really good for that. And you think yeah. about it differently when you're not like watching a gig. Mm-hmm. You just think of music a little differently, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Because we were on the, the whole touring buzz and gigging buzz for like years there. Like, mm. And then when it, got, when it got taken away from us, then it's like, okay, now we have to like, properly fall in love with every other aspect you know yeah like I mean we're all missing gigs and obviously the format has changed somewhat and may continue to change and we don't know how long things are gonna evolve and change for but one of the questions I usually ask people is like what are their kind of best and worst gig memories because I think it's important that we remember gigs right so Mm, that's tough there's been I really like that K Fest, man. That was great. We played yeah. K Fest last year mm. and um, we were playing on the same lineup as like uh, Cherum and uh, Pillow Queens and Just Mustard. Just Mustard and uh, Kneecap were there and Podge as well. Post Punk Podge yeah. was there. So we were like hanging out with all, all those people. Like, we had admired throughout the years. Yeah, though. we had admired so much and we were just like chilling with them for the night, like partying on, like it was some crack. Yeah. That's probably the best one just for in terms of like the crack. I don't think we played that well that day, but like. Mm. We probably did, but yeah, 
but as it in was, terms of crack and memories, so that yeah, was definitely yeah. one. As a festival yeah, as well, it's one that takes over an entire town. So the entire town turns into an art installation in itself for the weekend. So like over the streets, there's like walking to abandoned buildings and just see a gig. Yeah, gigs, <laughs> yeah. performance art, like a class. film. Class. Like, yeah, it, and being in Kerry, I you know just that kind of society where everything kind of feels old in your own new way. Um, is amazing so looking forward to alternative festivals coming back as yeah, well yeah. more than just I feel like festivals are going to get more ones, alternative anyway definitely but in terms of our worst gig um, mm. I don't really want to like name, name out names, venues or people name venues or people but like played in a tree house we once. played in a tree house yeah. <laughs> uh, in a smoking area and we were colder than everybody else uh, yeah I don't want to go into I don't want to go into more of it because uh but you, in, in, even in those, like that's the thing when you look at bad gig experiences, they're all, they're all experiences, and I think, we're, like you can look at people anyway. But we're all experienced junkies, and we just need our our, our fix. And like <laughs> either bad experiences or good experiences, yeah. I don't know we get our we get our fix of experience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, you could either grow better or grow better, and that's what life is about. So yeah. everything that you experience, you take it whatever you're supposed to take it or want to take yeah. it, and definitely um that's yeah that's great i i love like uh even i was thinking like yesterday last year so like a year and a day ago i was at mac demarco and i'd forgotten that that was actually one of the most mental gigs of my whole entire life was that vicar street yeah was that was that the one where you climbed off the balcony yeah if you go back onto my Instagram page after this, yeah. it's actually I was actually really just under him. I touched his feet like, oh, yeah. That's when nice. he's jumping off the balcony. Like it was just okay. insane. There was spiral pits. Like I did not think Mac DeMarco's music inspired spiral pits, but there were spiral pits more than I was at a Sepultura yeah. gig years ago. There was no spiral pits, right? Yeah. You're at a Mac DeMarco gig and you're like, oh, <laughs> people are strange. It was class. I saw yeah. him a week later. He was much more tamely. He didn't jump off the balcony like. But yeah, those spiral picks, all right. And he played Metallica at the end and everyone just went wild like. Yeah, that was some gig. What was he playing? He was playing um oh which one did he play again? Uh Master of Puppets or something. Master of Puppets, yeah. No, Enter Sandman. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's who played. Sick. <laughs> That is insane. I think he played that as well for us, but it was tequila that he jumped off the balcony for. <laughs> is that where Lost Bitch was playing that one as well? Yeah, with him on stage and he just climbed up, but I think he got in trouble that night. So the next night when he played, he didn't do it again. Yeah. Damn. Missed the boat there. But that was the other thing about that gig. That gig was really reasonable. Like I think it was like 22 euro or something. And I was like, that's impressive that someone of that caliber still has tickets that are mm. that affordable. Out, like, so, you know, mm. That's important, I think. And yeah, it's the yeah. Fugazi mentality, like, do you know? By cheap, by often. Well, did they did they tell it was a fiver? Yeah, fiver mm. every gig for like their whole career. That's the way to go, like. Music's for the people, like. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And so, like, how are you feeling, like, with Harp? So it's out there and people are really, really enjoying it. And it's day one. So I know it's going to be a really hard question because you still haven't digested the fact. So it's even impressive that you're doing an interview. That's well done. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, it's exciting because it's day one of many because, we've, like, we've been, we've been hard at work for the whole lockdown. And just, yeah, actually, it's almost take everything in our stride. We've had a bit of time to mull over. We know what we're doing now and we're, we're excited to just share yeah. more of it with you. Yeah, really. we have more tunes on the way. Like, So like, it's only the beginning. It's only yeah, the beginning. and we're delighted that p- people have taken the harp so well and yeah. can't say much more on what else it's come, but there's, yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah, I can't wait to see what else comes. Uh, what are your thoughts on releasing during this moment in time like some people are kind of resistant of it other people are like just get out as much as possible other people have kind of a planned strategy other people had a planned strategy and then this yeah. moment in time happened so what way do you fall on that i think it kind of kicked us in the arse to kind of make a strategy yeah, yeah. like because uh, before the lockdown we had just been kind of going from like gig to gig and we've been kind of putting off like writing or recording music for like a long time you know but then since like 
uh, the coronavirus, we were just kind of like, all right, we need to make a strategy now because it's going to end and we can't just fall off halfway through. Like, you know, you got to just power on. Like, hmm. And if recording and releasing is the only thing you can do, like you might as well just do it to your best potential. Like, and uh, yeah, really happy with her. Hmm. I think this time of year as well, in particular, it kind of got neglected throughout the other years um, with music because I don't know, everyone feels that a bit of November lull in the sun setting early. Sometimes you just need a good tune and this is a tune for, for now. Yeah, it's perfect. It's really happy go lucky. Uh, it's funny as well. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I've got a nod in my back pocket and I want to spend the night like, like who doesn't like enjoy lines like that in a song? Do you know what I mean? Like that's perfect. Um, and like, I mean, I only heard it today. So the fact that it's even sticking in my mind just shows you that you're on to like uh, a great whistle test plaster. You know what I mean? Like, that's amazing. Um, and more of that I'm sure is coming your way. I think it's great that it's inspired you to have kind of more of a, um, uh, ambition and a path that you need to follow with what you're doing. Cause obviously touring is brilliant, yeah. but it's really important to get the music out there. So I'm, delighted that that's what you're taking out at this moment in time effectively yeah same mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's good to be able to look at it from all angles like yeah really good unique opportunity yeah it certainly is that it's a unique opportunity <laughs> and a unique <laughs> moment in time huh <laughs> i so you're going to be releasing more stuff uh, do you guys have any merch at the moment? I forgot to look earlier. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. on our website. Our website's actually looking banging at the moment. It's Definitely just, check um, that out. Thelovebuzz.com. Okay. Yeah. But you have to search it in the search bar. Not anymore. Not anymore. If okay. you look up the Love Buzz website, it'll come up on Google, all right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got all our merch up there. We have loads of stuff in stock at the yeah. moment. Making some like, new stuff as well. We have like a discount, discount code as well. So it's like 10% off. Yeah, you sent our power. Yeah. yeah, easy to remember. Like. Yeah. Tarp week. You're getting your bit of love buzz merch like. Yeah, no, I will go and add you to my captivity um post next week then. So I'll buy something of yours off the website and then post oh, it yeah. on. Thank you so much. We can send something on if you yeah, want. Yeah. And if you want anything any specific colour, just don't be afraid to hit us up. Thank yeah. you. I will absolutely do that. Uh have you guys been working on any different types of content. So has this maybe changed your creative process or has it made you look into things that you hadn't considered doing before or upskilling stuff that you've already been doing? Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Throughout the, the lockdown, I started like drumming myself. Like I started like a band in, on drums uh, with my girlfriend and her friends and it's been really good class so far, like just kind of starting it off. But it's good crack. It's like, we're trying to make like shoegaze stuff. But that's something I never would have done otherwise, you know? So, like, you know, it's good that we had all that time mm. to mess around. Like. And we're out, yeah, we've been making loads of, like, demos and stuff yeah. that, like, aren't necessarily fitting to the love buzz, but, like, it's still a bit of crack to focus your energy on something that might not even be a thing. But, you know, you're still learning, like, at the end of the day. Yeah, well, whatever way, like, okay, so gigging is a wonderful way to exercise your uh, skill. So you're practicing your instrument and you're getting your craft better. So whatever you are doing in this moment in time to keep your craft going is very important. So even if it doesn't really fit into the genre that you're thinking, you're still practicing that muscle. So you're doing what you need to do to be better at your job. So you're doing fantastic. I've been exploring since as well. Yeah, we got way more since in the gaff now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, I managed to cop an organ at the start of the lockdown off. Um, three, you know, by Curious. I do indeed. It turned out to be his father-in-law, uh, <laughs> the guitarist by Curious. It turned out to be his father-in-law who bought the organ off. Lovely man, lovely man. Um, Big organ. Huge organ, uh, a, a Dutch thing from 1973. I got it for a, for a very reasonable price. Um, but uh, that that got me into keys. Yeah, more. there's just loads of keys in the room right mm. now. Like. Yeah. And like we're living with um Jordan from Happy Alone as well. So he's got like an abundance of gear as well. Yeah. So uh I think a few of his things are in our rooms at the moment. Yeah. So we we, we just have random John Carpenter nights for no apparent reason. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Plug, plug it all in. Like we've we've a big speaker that's currently 
not with us. The guards took it the off. The guards us. took our speaker off us. And it was ironically nicknamed the Garda Magnet. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> we, we used to plug all our stuff in there and just like have like a drum machine on the go and like a synth on the go. Yeah, do a bit of street street performance. Yeah, that, we that, was, yeah, great, that we're, was a great we're crack doing actually. A bit of, um, busking midnight like, test when uh, when the when the coronavirus levels were like really low. We were busking on the street because like. And we brought out a trolley, so we filled up like the trolley with like synths and like um, the laptop, the and we used, uh, a few pedals, and we were just. And then Henry brought a drum kit one night. It's like, oh, it's some crack. Yeah, that was very fun. It's been amazing yeah. crack, yeah. but yeah, no more speaker. You can't do that anymore. And, and the lockdown, yeah. speaker. <laughs> so like, the world's out to get us, you know. <laughs> Look, I think all the artistic sort really feel that way, you know. Um, who doesn't miss live performances or buskers? I think next week maybe busking can happen again. I uh, think. Because, you know, with all those copper coins, like, you know what I mean? Uh, but everyone's doing copper coins, man, in the shops. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, everyone who works in a shop has to handle copper coins. There, is a, doing it, really. there is a kind of um, moral dilemma with doing stuff like yeah. that as well. Do you know what I mean? You need to, yeah. You need to meet somewhere in the middle. Like. A happy middle. Yeah. We were supposed to do a gig in the Kino as well. And then to, yeah. you know, like a week before or something. We were supposed to play a fan club last night. Yeah, we were supposed to play a fan club last night. Yeah, Jesus. That was some gig, boys. That was some gig, boys. <laughs> that was probably going to be our biggest one yet. Like, Yeah, we were pulling out all the stops for that. <laughs> all of the stops. That, that was going to be our first MCD show. As they go. Hey, but look, you're already on the radar and now you're about to release even better music. So you're just going to go back yeah. up higher on the echelon. I'm not too worried about you at all. Uh, no. You know, bit of crack, bit of crack. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, no, it, it is sad. Like, I mean, I had loads of gigs planned for October. I was going to do live streams and hybrid gigs. And then same as everyone, guys, do you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a tough dose, but sure. I know it's it's all it's all just brewing. It's all brewing. I, I'm I I can't help but feel excitement more than anything at the moment. Like, um, yeah, I'm over the peril. Like, I'm over the peril lately. Just it's just excitement. Yeah, it's given great opportunities. Like things like this, I'm able to connect with you guys without yeah. meeting. We're able to have open conversations about what you do and how he create which is giving you a completely different type of content that maybe other people wouldn't have had the access to before because all you used to put out was your music or your videos or your gigs and that's great but there's obviously a whole different side of each artist that needs to be kind of looked into too yeah definitely took took, took away uh a certain veneer that most media like like net like when you watched an interview before there was very much an image that had to be portrayed but now people can just be themselves more i think we're going to see a lot more of that in music in the next decade anyway, I'm sure. In the sound of music. Really. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, it's, it's a really different time, but it's also a really exciting time. Like, yeah. so many creative ways are being uh, made to allow, like, performers to still perform, like, live streaming in different venues and stuff like that. That's really exciting yeah. to me, to you know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's great to see all the venues kind of doing things again, like, Exactly. Like, we know so many venues we haven't been able to open yet, and it's just for them. Can't wait to see you again, Fred Zeppelins. Yeah, all the Fred Zeppelin heads. Time. Come on, raise you your know, glass. You raise your glass. Fred Zeppelin. Spill a drink for Freds. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it's it's gonna be huge. It's gonna be huge. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I can't wait. So obviously you're doing the drum and band, and you guys are doing all the stuff with the organs and the synths, and um the cop magnet got taken that's unfortunate <laughs> but uh, was there any other kind of changes to your creativity so have you like found it to be an easier time to create music in or a harder time or has anything shifted or changed during this moment in time uh, the practice routine changed yeah, yeah the approach so like basically like before just before lockdown the first one we uh we had like our own studio out in richie's in blackpool and we had like our own room so we were out there like practicing every day but then we couldn't afford it anymore when you know gigs stopped. when gigs stopped. Yeah. So um, so it basically went from us like practicing every day to us trying to record a new song every day, mm. which is for the better for the time, you know. Yeah. But, um, that being said, like 
if we practice before 100 percent of the time i'd say now we practice like 20 percent of the time yeah which isn't the best thing but like when do you come back up again? when uh, we'll the practice room back. is coming back in a week like so mm-hmm. look forward to that and you've been sending on demos and stuff as well yeah we've been making loads, loads of demos we'll henry's been practicing them in yeah. uh C- in csm but uh yeah so we got we got a kind of a flow going at the moment when it comes to writing stuff and practicing stuff on our own time i think that's amazing like i even love the way that you're kind of accidentally changing and evolving with it like so it's, it's not intentional but you're going with the flow as opposed to against it a lot of people are scared of change so they're like oh, this isn't what i'm used to what do i do what i do nothing uh but you guys are, are evolving with it and you're trying out new sounds you're trying out new projects you are fitting in the practice where you can but you're also sending out demos and looking that's all very positive stuff that's inspiring uh so well done thank you thanks thank you we're delighted with it yeah hopefully yeah any venues that you miss dearly do you want to shout out uh, I really missed Electric Avenue in town I was finally able to start putting gigs on in there so that's Waterford wow. and that's kind of gone by the way by everything is uh, obviously I really 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 miss Drop Dead twice in Dublin that's one of my favorite places to visit and see what's going on in the underground whenever I get away and yeah. any of the bigger venues because I try to make it a habit to have a fun gig every five weeks so I'll travel Sound to it. wherever and just take a night off and enjoy a gig yeah that hasn't happened since March my last gig was Vernon oh. Jane and by Curious <laughs> Vernon Jane and by Curious Vernon Jane are class man be curious for us too they're both really class yeah well, we had Transmission Music Festival, so I actually did have a gig. And then yeah. I had two gigs. I manage um, a community garden in Waterford, so I got to have two actual outdoor live gigs as well in September. And I was part of another live stream. So that was cool. But I mean, my last big yeah, gig was cool. Fern and Jane by Curious. And where was that? In Dublin? In the Academy. Oh, nice. Yeah, that'd be a place, that'd be a place to go. Like. I think our last gig was... The girl band after party. Do you know that? Do you know the tan jackets? Yeah, it's. Like I said a, yes, but I mean no. It's um. There are some lads from Alter Divers, some from Shoot Crash, some from okay. uh, their own other projects. Cork heads. It's just really good Cork musicians, like, and they were playing like sixties uh, garage gems, like covering like Surfing Bird and stuff. Oh, that was some crack. Yeah, it was a great. But that was our last gig. We we didn't even know. We didn't get to see girl bands because we couldn't afford it. Okay, well, that's that's fair enough. Yeah, it's yeah. sometimes that's just the way it goes. I'd never heard of the tan jackets. I'm definitely going to look them up. I do obviously know Shukra and Walter Dowers, but I, I didn't ever know there was a super band in the midst. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Cork's, Cork's right on it. Cork's cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but Cork is brilliant. I do like. Uh, back in the day when I started off doing music promotion, I used to put on gigs in the Crane Lane quite regularly. Oh, the Crane Lane is a great spot. Yeah. Great yeah. spot. Yeah. One of our roommates works there now. Yeah. We got yeah. one roommate who works in Crane Lane and the other roommate manages Cypress yeah. Avenue. Cypress Avenue is another venue that I, I, I quite miss as well. And Fred Zeppelin's yeah. obviously. Like, Cork yeah. is amazing. Um, there's so many cool heads in Cork. Like, Literally, yeah. there's so much music there in your way. It's impressive. Like Red Sun Alert, uh, God That's Alone. Um, happy. Pretty happy messing. If you, if you can call it, they'll call themselves Cork. They are Cork. Baylor? <laughs> Baylor are kind of Cork, even though there's yeah. one Waterford guy in there. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other bands actually I should be listening out to now that you're after giving me a gem uh, that I can't uh, wait to listen to? From Cork. Of course, no happy alone, I'm sure. Of course. Uh, also one water for guy. Yeah, yeah. Not, well, anymore. not anymore. He left. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But Tim they got Curry. a new guy. Yeah. And he's a G. Yeah. So uh it works out. Any other cork bands? Any other definitely the Mary Do you ever listen to Gilbert? Yeah, Gilbert. Oh. Gilbert and the unfathomable loneliness of the deep space prospector. <laughs> They're <laughs> well, so you. good. That that's how Thank we you. that's how we chose our um producer Chris Summers, because he produced our album. Honestly, I had the best album to come out of Cork in 10 years, in my opinion. Yeah. But we were like, this is class. So that's why we got on to the producer that I've been working with ever since, you know. Um, who else? Rasputin's Boots. Rasputin's Boots. Rasputin's we haven't put boots. out anything yet. But they're, they're doing things. They're doing bits. Yeah. 
um, pretty happy. Players, players, um, Armour's the, the drive. Yeah, uh, there's plenty. Of court, like, loads. yeah, Pyong K, the, the 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 young scene in court. That was kind of something that was nice seeing. But like, I feel bad for all the first people who are in first year of college who who, who did like music society this year and didn't work get to organize battle of the bands mm-hmm. and kind of get to join the new uh join the new scene then. join the new scene but like the young bands who started just before the lockdown i have no doubt that they kept on working and yeah. um they're doing the same thing that we're all doing and they've got their buns in the oven yeah yeah so oh yeah like, it's explore. challenging like do you know it is definitely like you're right like i hadn't even considered like the community fraternity and connection that you actually get from first year in college having to meet other people. I have loads of friends who just started in BIM this year and I'm like, geez, that's going to be a different networking kind of situation, yeah. isn't it? Like, Yeah, we, we did a course to a part of it. We had to organize gigs for the for the course and we have friends who are doing the course this year. Of course, like, they don't get to organize gigs. They just get to like, I don't know what they, what they have to do. They're practicing and practicing. learning. Yeah, learning. That thing. College bit. <laughs> um, yeah, we all... We they could do. organize gigs, but they just have to think outside the box. Yeah. yeah, do the flaming lips thing with the big uh, Zorb bubbles. Did yeah. you see that? Yeah, it's that so heartwarming. Like, mm. gigs. <laughs> it is. It's amazing. Like, there's just there's so much as pretend. Like, there's so much as possible in this moment in time if you just dream with your eyes open and go for it. Do you know what I saw over the summer, and I thought it was actually pretty class. Was uh, it was a drive-in play, um. Like down in Kinsale, down in you drove in, and this there's a stage up. You know, you tuned your car radio to the to the frequency, and it picked up the audio from the from stage. And at the end of each set, you know, beep 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. beep beep, and that 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 moment was worth it every time. Like you'd feel them, just the beeps. Um, so I get what you mean. There's there's, there's ways around it. There's the drive, ways around that ride. Gig, like, so yeah. doable. Well, the drive-in gigs were actually all cancelled. So really? I had a friend who was working on that project. He he was like basically one of the head guys in that. And um, yeah, they allowed drive-in bingo, but for whatever reason, drive-in gigs weren't allowed. And drive-in yeah. cinema, I think that's relaunching, but for whatever reason, driving gigs are still not really allowed. But like, there's so many great live streaming events that are possible and are going ahead. Yeah, I don't know, like other voices this year is going to be not only RT but actually live streamed as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same with Ireland Music Week was live streamed. Yeah, yeah. done really well. Yeah, it's good. To, it's, yeah, it's good to see. Yeah, we we tried to do a live stream. K Fest and didn't go too well. Buzz. I think uh, I think our setup was too cheap. Yeah. But uh carry Wi Fi. I'm blaming carry Wi Fi. <laughs> <laughs> we had to go through us to carry to Dublin, I think. <laughs> yeah, but look, you actually do really need powerful Wi Fi for that. Like you can't yeah. just live stream, like you know what I mean? That's that's an important component of live streaming. Do you know what I mean? You can always do a pre-record and pass it off as a live stream as well. So that is a possibility. A lot of people are doing that with the pre-records because they feel more comfortable with the sound being engineered that way. I yeah. mean, Transmission Music Festival, we managed to do a 10-hour live stream featuring 18 Irish acts. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. Where was that then? Uh, we did it in Dublin. So there's a team of us. I was one of the presenters for the day, but there's also one of the consultants on the projects. So that was really interesting. Yeah. We did that in August, on August 1st, actually. Yeah, that was a good time for coronavirus. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, we were doing camping. We were a lot of camping then. Oh, yeah, we were camping loads. You were doing loads of cooking and camping around that time. We were cooking like lamb curries on the fire and stuff. Yeah. <sighs> Underrated so things. Cooking is oh, yeah. camping. Yeah. <laughs> Have you like? Have you always been into your food, or like has lockdown added an evolutionary uh-huh. step yeah, to your added food? It's it's added it. Yeah, Aiden's always been a chef. Like Aiden's always been able to cook up some really mad stuff. I like but, uh, Yeah, I've definitely learned a lot more about cooking and cooking like vegan food and stuff as well. It's into it. Yeah. yeah, it's good. Yeah, any kind of upskill so like i mean you're already feeding your soul with the music why not feed your body with the good food you know yeah soul ears body <laughs> heart heart yeah in that order <laughs> in that order okay. so other than food and incredible music and loads of 
playing around with your craft and figuring out other stuff. Have you like been watching a certain type of film that you hadn't considered in a long time, documentaries, anything that you've been able to do that was a bit crack as well, other than the camping and the busking? Uh, I've yeah, watched of loads of movies. Creep. <laughs> have you seen Creep? So good. Creeps are really good films. It's a horror pick film. of the summer. What else do we see? Evil Dead. Evil Dead, yeah. But cool. obviously, Black that's Black amazing. As well. so yeah. Like, you what's some... Creep about? Because it sounds familiar, but I can't talk it's, about it. It's like the, about this guy who, like, um, he he like goes on Craigslist and like pays someone a thousand dollars to film like his last words. Yeah, because he's gonna die. And it's just like basically like a one man play, but it's just oh it's so good. It's a sequel is even better. Found footage kind of style. Found footage kind of style, yeah. But uh yeah. Oh, I have not fun. seen that. We Very watched much. loads of horrible movies as well, like really bad movies. The roadie. Like worst rated movies type thing. Have you, do you know the roadie? Yeah. I love really, really bad films. So like I love things like Slither, like a Halloween, that's all I wanted to do is watch day uh Tucker and Dale versus Evil yeah, and yeah. all that kind of film, you know, like um, I love, love, love yeah. those kind of films. Oh, scary movie films. We watched them over Halloween. Yeah, yeah. man. <laughs> scary movie yeah, films. Yeah, scary though. when it gets to the credits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. One you see was a producer on the second one, and it was just like the movie made a little more sense. And I was like, all oh, right, fuck's sake. Like, oh god. Um watch Midsummer. Uh, and on my birthday, I watched 28 Days Later in the field, and it was great. We played uh, at the you know, we played the field drinking game. We made our own drinking game for the field. Hey. And it was... Uh, whatever they say, bull, whatever yeah. they mention religion. Whenever they say the field, like, it got yeah. it got messy. Yeah. <laughs> so there's still ways to have fun during lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> so many ways. Uh, I'd even consider you guys might do posts about inventive ways to stay creative and fun during lockdown that could be a great little bit of content for the love buzz to add to their page yeah yeah that's yeah. good tea biscuits we'll have, over. To, we'll have to get more into doing skits all right <laughs> yeah yeah it's been a while since we did a skit yeah we'll get we'll get out the phones and we'll do a few videos tonight should we look it's harp week <laughs> <laughs> it's harp week harp now would you look would you look every week is harp week yeah from now on from here on out like harp week it is hard week and guys again so bloody proud that song is fucking amazing like i can swear it's my own channel you can also swear it's my own channel i don't imagine i'll be getting monetized by youtube anytime soon so fucking amazing Hello. is what harp is <laughs> yep. well done is there anything else you'd like to add to the interview before i stop recording and i let you go back to your lives uh Stay tuned. Stay tuned. That's that's those are two words that are coming to mind for me. Yeah. Um, go stay, to lovebuzz.com. Go to lovebuzz.com if you want to buy merch. Or um, just join our mailing list. Yeah. Listen Funny to, skits. Listen to Harp. Listen to Harp. Uh, check out the rest of the Viking uh, po- uh, promotions. Podcast. Like. We have. They're, uh, they're yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I just keep on, keep on being you. Keep on heaping on. Keep on heaping on. <laughs> See you soon. Ha, ha, ha.